The 470th edition of the MMA Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com and use promo code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. We're also brought to you by Game Time. Game Time tickets make the perfect holiday gift. Sign up at gametime.co and use promo code CFBX for $20 off. GameTime.co, promo code CFBX. And finally, we're brought to you by the SGPN app. The SGPN app is completely free to download, and it's your home for all your favorite SGPN podcasts, contests, and picks. Just type SGPN into your app store today and download America's number one DGEN app. Heidi Ho, DeGenerinos, welcome to episode 470, 470 of the MMA Gambling Podcast and the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. Uh, let's dedicate this one to one of our buddies in the Discord, Scuba, who needs a, a pick-me-up right now. So this goes out to the good old man named Scuba. And of course, it's the man because we only have men in the Discord, sadly. <laughs> and only have men watching us on YouTube and only have men listening to our podcast unless they force their wives to listen. But 100% thanks for coming to the show. on YouTube. 100%, 100% still on YouTube. 100% men so uh, well thank you for coming to the sausage party that is going to be our ufc 296 recap i'm with your host jeff chalks fox i may have won the battle but i did not win the war uh this year uh the man who won the war is the man sitting beside me <laughs> virtually in the screen it's one and only daniel gumby vreeland with the no contest hat on oh no uh this is uh this this is from my, my playing days i ran out of like uh fun minor league ones and we had to go to division three college uh so it is, is... N- uh, nor no no nichols nichols college nichols college yeah this is uh this is this was our home get up right here with the uh green brim and the black hat uh they don't like... google sorry everyone google don't Gumby, google my, uh, don't google Reland, my ERA. College to see stats. <laughs> it's not good and while you're at it Google Jeff Fox University of Waterloo to see my stats as well in basketball. It's it's just as bad. Okay. Yeah, we're, go we're ahead, about Gumby. the same level of of athlete when it comes to college. <laughs> were you a reformed to different position that became uh, something? No, else, oh, no I just was. Uh, I was a guy who oh, okay. got cut in basketball in high school, and it was a shock that I made it in college. So <laughs> my coach in high school was like, "What? How's he on the team?" Because all like the yeah I stars was... from high school got cut, and yet I made it because I got better. As I, got I was older, the so I was the fourth best catcher on the college, so they cut me and made me a relief pitcher. So yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> why my really, that's why my pitching Fantastic. stats suck. <laughs> um, Fantastic. A couple yeah, of Al, so, Al Bundy's here talk about our glory days. Yeah, yeah. I once scored four touch or five touchdowns it, in a game for Polk yes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, um, hope people get that reference. What? What did I'm you? I'm surprised you did. With? Yeah. Oh, dude was born in 1989, and he uh, knows about my dad. Um, my yeah, dad was my a dad big it. married with children. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come on, I, I, grew up, really... I grew up in Louisiana. We watched Married with Children. That's true. <laughs> I, oh, I, I know what I teach up with. I won the battle last night. Oh, so right. you won the war. Yes. So I got to ask, because when we were going to record on Thursday, we we're doing the fancy picks. You said uh, I was ahead in the yep. total picks on the year. I was ahead yes. in the locks in the year. I was ahead in the dogs in the year. And yep. I was slightly behind on the props, but I feel like that may have changed. You swept the board, Gumby. You, you won everything. Congratulations <laughs> to Gumby. Yeah, the two fifty. Like, it was a two fifty hit this week. <laughs> he did. Gumby, Gumby did very well. We both did well last night. We both did really good at USC two ninety six. Um, cleaned up, but it was too late for me to to catch up on on the year. I, everyone just assumes you were beating me anyhow, I'm sure, because you sound smarter on these shows. My guy, every, every my guy Brian this, so. Rogers on, on YouTube thought I was sweeping you. <laughs> exactly. But really, this is the first time he's beaten me. But And he didn't just beat me. He whooped me in every category. He beat me in overall lock dog props, uh, totals. If you, if you added up all the totals together, he beat me on that, obviously, too. So, yeah. But last night, I, I ended up 219 bucks. You ended up 167. So I beat you there, even though you did better on your uh, – you hit your lock, and as you mentioned, a plus two fifty prop pick. So, uh, you, you did quite well there. In the real world, did you do well last night? In yeah, the, I, I, I feel like everybody in the Discord did really well in the real world because some people were in on that uh, Cody Garbrand KO prop, uh, yep. which obviously went really well. That one was like two to one. 
I saw some people early in on uh, Feely inside the distance, and there, you know, there was a bunch of uh, bunch of fun ones there. So yeah, no, it was a good night overall. I think for for just about everybody, and then uh, except for maybe, I, I know some people were complaining. The the main card in terms of entertainment value, yeah, eh, D- took eh. a dive, took a bit I, of a dive. I, I think it in I think in like a regular night of fights, you might have been like, oh, this is a you know a halfway decent main card. Yeah. There were some fun and competitive fights or whatever. But because it was the pre the prelims were what they were, which were insane. Yeah. Yes. The main card just looked it just paled in comparison. Yeah, that was it was a dream prelims for the UFC mm-hmm. since they booked their prelims to get people try to convince people to buy um by the pay-per-views. Yeah, the prelims you had uh, two, uh, you had two finishes to lead things off, and then you had two banger fights to, to lead like full uh, 15 minute fights to lead into the main card. They couldn't have asked for anything better there, probably. Yeah, no, that that uh, great fights, back and forth fights, big knockouts, yeah. prospects emerging. Like, and, and obviously, we'll talk about it all. <laughs> yeah, instead of dancing around, let's actually dive right into it. This was the last UFC event of the year, UFC 296 T Mobile Arena in Paradise. Nevada, 19,039 people in attendance, 9.3 million gates. So they, they did quite, quite well there. Uh, you wonder why they want to keep booking the UFC Apex when uh, I, they're not going to make 9.3 million every every event, uh, fight night they do. But yeah, it was a very, uh, very nice uh, night for the UFC. All right, main event, good night for Leon Edwards. Uh, got the job done against Colby Covington, 49, 46, 49, 46, 49, 46 across the board. We both had Edwards at minus 155, which we both thought was a, a good price for him. We thought this was going to be just a matchup, even though Covington is shot and um, didn't really deserve the title shot. We thought it was going to be an inter- interesting matchup. We were wrong. We got the, the pick right. We were wrong about it being interesting. I said the less we could say about Colby Covington, the better I said off air but Gumby wants to really go in on him. So go ahead, Gumby, go in on well, favorite fighter Colby. Well, well, and uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to backtrack a little bit and give us a little credit. Cause on Thursday, I think, I think we said Colby Covington has all the tools he would need to make this interesting. But I think all mm-hmm. of us agree, you know, both of us agreed that the reason we were picking Leon Edwards is that the layoff and the fact that he hadn't used any of those tools against anybody significant in a long ass time, right? Like who was the last person that he beat with those tools where you were like, oh, hey, that's pretty respectable. Because, like, to me, beating uh, – who, who did he beat last? Beating Jorge Masvidal, not that impressive using those tools. Yeah. Beating a shell of Tyron Woodley with that, not all that impressive. Like, beating RDA coming up a weight class for an interim title he didn't know he was fighting for for the most part. Again, maybe yep. not that impressive. Like Robbie the last... Lawler is not impressive. Yeah, Maya it... is not impressive. He he does not have any any win that really uh, any top top level win that that's aged very well. He he's beaten big name guys who are were well on the other yeah, side the of, of their prime. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it, and especially when you consider how he's winning too, right? Like w- we've said time and time again, what's Colby Covington's best weapon? His volume and his pace in moving forward. And he wasn't going to have that with ring rust because that's the first thing that's hard to dial back in when you have ring rust is like being able to time up your opponent and be in his face nonstop. Your cardio goes down a little bit and you could see it in him there. Like his timing just wasn't there. He was scared to move forward because every time he did, he was hitting nothing but air and he was getting ripped on the return. So, you know, like there's that. And then also like, all of these people that he's beating, guys either coming up a weight class that he can bully or guys who are past their prime, it's easy to put a pace on Robbie Lawler at 30. I mean, he's probably not as old as I think he is. I was just gonna I was <laughs> gonna quote five years ago, but still. Yeah, it's like it's you know what one of my favorite games in MMA is is uh mm. I, I ask a friend of mine, uh anybody who's into to MMA, who, who uh how old do you think Joe Diesel Riggs is? <laughs> probably not very old <laughs> do you want do you want to play this should game? Be. guess how guess how old joe diesel Riggs is i would guess like 45 but i'm guessing he's not he's 41 <laughs> okay yeah I was so like, yeah but man that's i would have guessed 50 like you know like he's been around um, a long time and so robbie lawler's probably in that same boat right like where i think he's like 62 and he's like actually only 38 or something um yep. but like beating guys who are way past their prime and all of that kind of stuff is, is easier to do when you're a pace guy 
He's not going to outpace Leon Edwards. He's not going to outpace Bilal Muhammad. He's not going to outpace Shavkat Rachmanov. So, like, I, I don't know what he does next. You know, like, do, do you have a thought on... on Go away. Little... Go away, hopefully. Because uh, not just his personality um, being fake and annoying, but... He's not fun to watch. I think, <laughs> He's never been I think fun talk, to watch. <laughs> just talk, just talk, toxic overall, because it... it enables too many people it, it emboldens too many people to do who who actually believe the things he says to to act, act the way he acts but um regardless of that um yeah he, he has nothing left to offer i don't know why they yeah. think other than it, donald trump shows up anyhow even without colby covington so right. if they're courting that crowd they don't need colby covington for yeah that. he's I mean, he's i don't think he's pulling what people think he's pulling and yeah, i know he's got a, a i know he's even got the a ufc thing. thinks that though that's the thing the boss yeah, know- think that he's a big draw but i don't think he ever was really no and i'll tell you what donald trump looked bummed out that he was talking about him in the post fight interview <laughs> he looked yeah. bummed, which was kind of funny he was like i still love and he was like nah just, <laughs> just yeah, maybe don't lost. mention me yeah, yeah maybe donald trump only me. only wins he doesn't hang out with losers so uh he's but all but all that aside you know yes. like, what what do we do next with him like do you think he is going to do you think he's going to take the step back he needs to in order to compete in the division? Or do you think he's just going to like, is he the guy who's going to wait here for a super fight? He, he really believes Nate Diaz or Dustin Poirier, or I know he called Connor. out wonder boy, like wonder boy is said expli- explicitly. He only wants to fight guys who will be like fun on the feet. And I think he took yeah. the shop cop fight because he got, you know, he, he didn't take the Michelle pay to fight and he owed the UFC one. So like, I don't know that he's taking a Colby Covington fight at this point. Like, who who is who's for a big fight gonna take Colby Covington? And is Colby Covington going to take a fight with the Neil Magnes and Jeff Neils of the world? No, I I I hope not, and I don't th- think so either. Because he, I I guess the argument could be he was holding out for title fights, and it worked each time for title shots. Yeah. So maybe now that he's not gonna get a title he's shot, he be won't active. hold out anymore. But if he wants to sit out until he gets a, a, a quote unquote money fight, fine by me. Um, You're never going to get. Mer- I don't think you'll ever get Con- one. Connor McGregor uh, batted around, but there's Connor. Why fight a guy who, who would yeah, try to wrestle you? Probably. Yeah. So, well, in yeah. upper weight class, why would Connor fight yeah. anybody like that? Like for me, if I'm Connor McGregor and I'm booking my fights, you know, like Dustin Poirier is on my mind. Yeah. Nate Diaz rematch is on my mind. You know, like there, there are way better, you know, telling Max Holloway to come back up to 155 yeah. pounds and fighting Max Holloway there is on my mind. Fighting Colby Covington is of no interest to me. Uh, yep. Like the luster is off having just lost, you know, he's lost three out of five. And, and like is one of eight guys in history to lose three title fights without a win. Like what, what poll is that anymore? So I mean, like, if I'm talking about him as an actual fighter who I thought would accept fights, like him versus Sean Brady right now would be a really great fight. It would be it would tell us a lot about Sean Brady uh, and whether or not he could deal with the wrestling. It would tell us a lot about whether or not Colby Covington is actually full on washed or if he's like, you know, just over his head with champions, you know, kind of, so to speak. You know, like that kind of fight would be a really good one for him right now. Uh, And I don't know if he'll take it. I don't. I don't think he'll take fights like that. Yeah, you see fighters, uh, older fighters, washed, washed, quote unquote fighters, um, not be able to pull the trigger. But usually, it's in the striking realm. He he couldn't pull the trigger in the. Uh, he didn't do anything in the wrestling realm, which is which is scary. So yeah, I I wouldn't pick him over anyone really at this point. And I'm what do you think of what do you think of Leon's wrestling? In all in all honesty, yeah. Like, let's let's, let's talk fun, about the actual right? winner and, and yeah, the champion kind of here. Um, yeah, he. Um, I, I've I've heard some criticism of Leon's performance, but then I've also I it think was it was perfect. I think yeah, it was perfect. Severe MMA was saying like you can't do much if the other if your opponent's not going to engage in any any realm with you. So there's not you can't. It, it takes two to tango. Basically is is uh, is what I'm getting at here. And if Colby wasn't going to engage him in any realm, then it's hard to you know make the fight look good. But did what he had to do and got the job done. So yeah, and well, and I'll say this: you're right. It, it's both hard to make this an exciting fight if Colby won't. But it's also why make it any more exciting than it is. Colby's not going to put any pressure on you. 
You're not going to deal with any issues in terms of being in trouble because it's not like Colby's a power puncher, right? So if Colby's not even going to shoot takedowns, why do anything except for like blast him in a point fighting match? You know, like why put yourself in trouble unless you're talking about like, oh, he's got to knock out Colby Covington for his legacy. Like Colby Covington notoriously has always been hard to knock out and hard to finish, right? Like even Kamar Usman only finished him one out of two times. So like, yeah. Even with the argument that it like needs to be for legacy, it's not an easy legacy fight to put a guy away. So yeah. I, I mean, like he he fought a brilliant fight, with the exception of I think he was showing off a little bit too much with the wrestling. Almost yeah. netted him a, a rear mounted triangle, which uh, would have been really fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would have been nuts. If if Colby tapped there, that would have been really nuts. Um, but like uh, I thought. The maturity he showed in the fight and the restraint he showed in the fight. And, you know, I see people on Twitter being like, he didn't want to go just like kill the guy who talked about his dead father. And it's like that that to me shows what an impressive fighter he is because he fought with no emotion there. He didn't go yep. balls to the wall and like lose his mind, despite the fact that he could have because he hates the guy. So, you know, props to Leon Edwards. Perfect fight. He said afterwards he didn't want Bilal Muhammad. Um Yo, what, that's the next question for you. Who is next? A another thing. Um, it is Bilal. Bilal's got to be next. Yeah, obviously. And But uh, here's what I'll say to you, too. He seems very hesitant to book the Bilal Muhammad fight. If that's me, I'm the welterweight champion of the world, and I'll put you in these same shoes. Let's say you're the welterweight champion of the world. Bilal Muhammad's supposed to be next. Mm -hmm. Would you rather have Shavkat? <laughs> Would you rather mm -hmm. fight Shavkat? Yeah, Rock exactly. <laughs> like... Option number yeah. two is not any easier, bro. Like option number two is scary. <laughs> yeah, but that's another thing I was thinking as watching this fight uh last night. I'm thinking I'm I don't even know if we're watching the top two welterweights in the UFC fight here yeah, for the you're belt. Right. We're, we're, we're but, definitely in not, not like Edwards could be in the top two, sure, but uh, Covington obviously is not. But you know, Muhammad's Malone probably better. Well, and Machopkot might be better. one and two. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Exactly. So, so you're booking um Bilal next, correct? Yeah, I just think Bilal has like a longer resume. The the yep. wins, I, I mean, they speak for themselves. He, he looks yep. so good in that Sean Brady fight. Uh, how good Shavkat looked against um, Wonder Boy? Impressive, but it's grappling a guy who's good at striking. Yep. Whereas uh, Bilal stuffed the takedowns of Sean Brady. And for me, I, I don't know, doing that and then wrecking that guy in the feet. That, that's enough for me. I, I'd say uh, Bilal Muhammad, give Shopka a tune-up fight or something like that. I don't know uh, I don't know who gets. Or he could just be waiting in the wings, too, because it looks yep. like uh, the other guys who are knocking on the doorstep are already booked, too. The uh, Gilbert, did you see Gilbert Burns' JDM? Yep, I did. Fun, Gilbert, fun, Burns, fun. Gilbert Burns' JDM is fun. <laughs> it is fun. You know what else is fun? Playing on Underdog Fantasy. Uh, Underdog Fantasy has a way to play alongside your favorite fantasy players all season long. NFL, NBA, NHL, college basketball, college football, MMA. They got it all. Simply pick higher or lower on your favorite players' fantasy stats and cash in. Gumby, do you have a play for us? In any yeah, I, uh, yeah. On, on Monday? Yeah, Monday. Yeah. Uh, the uh, Thunder have a game, and I'm going to go with the uh, over, or higher than, rather, higher than half of a double-double for my boy Chet Holmgren. Uh, who's coming off a of back-to-back double-doubles with 11 rebounds in both of those games. Uh, and it's not just a pick em, It's a pick em scorcher. You get uh, 1.25 1. on that scorcher. So, uh, yeah, Chet, Chet Holmgren, uh, higher than half a double-double. Uh, he almost had a triple double with blocks last night. I was watching that on the second <laughs> so, screen so while fun. the fights were on. He had nine <laughs> blocks. He very, very close. Um, yeah, so make sure you uh, you play that. Also read our underdog pick up uh pick them plays not pick them underdog plays pretty much every day on the site sports gambling podcast.com gummy and i switch back and forth we do nba i do one day he does the next i hit my three picks the other night which was good so that's six times your money if anyone was was uh tagging along with you there and then we uh we have other writers covering uh hockey hockey and all the other sports that are going on now so be sure you check all of that stuff out and when you sign up with the promo code sgpn underdog will double your first deposit of up to 100 bucks it's underdog fantasy promo code sgpn all right. All I was that. one I was mm. one Terry Rozier uh you assist away Terry from Rozier. hitting mine. 
one Terry one Rozier again. You 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 uh you recommended him the uh a few yeah weeks I love Terry before. Rozier. <laughs> Boy, that's a strange kink to have, Gumby. Terry <laughs> Rozier is a strange kink. All right, we've covered one fight so far. Let's uh let's, <laughs> let's pick let's, up the pace here, shall we? Along. Um flyweight championship fight, Alexand- Alexandra Pantoja. He's tired, he's still tired, Gumby. He's getting tired. That was Joe Rogan he's loves talking about fighters getting tired and DC's the uh, oversized parrot on his shoulder that just parrots everything that uh, that Rogan says. But um, Patosha was getting tired, but he still got the job done against Brandon Robel. 50-45, 49-46. 50-45 twice, 49-46 once. Uh, wrestling was the name of the game. Patosha did not, uh, very visibly did not want to strike with Roy Val, which smart enough, uh, smart enough uh, plan. It obviously worked. Uh, Roy Val is a, can be a wild man on the feet. Um, I have Pantoja minus 190. Gummy took a swing on Roy Val as a dog. Yeah, I um, I was really impressed with his grappling. Uh, you know, like, I, I kind of thought, you know, I, I went with Panto or uh, Roy Val rather thinking that his grappling was just going to be good enough on the scrambles to get him back to mm-hmm. his feet or to, and it, it wasn't, you know, like, Pantoja is a different level grappling. He's pretty much what we thought he was when he was on the ultimate fighter. Right. Um, and that's maybe going to be the theme of a couple of the fighters I talk about tonight is like, they were what we thought they were in the first place. And it took him a little while to find it. Um, you know, and I think for the record too, I think the scorecards were bad. Uh, I think Roy Vall won the third. He wasn't given the third on any judges scorecards, uh, which is pretty wild to me. Uh, and then, you know, maybe the fifth, but the right guy won. Nevertheless, I, I think it's going to be a hard time for anybody dealing with Pantoja's grappling in this division. Yep. Um, go, going back to the scorecards, the right fighters won every fight. I think we, yep. we may have had some, you know, that, that's all we can ask for with these, with judges judging the way it is nowadays. We, we can't really ask for much. Um, what do you want next for Pantoja? Do you have a name in mind? There's two fights on the docket right now already booked. Whatever winner looks the best out of those four fights, I think is going to get it. Uh, we got Amiro Albazi is about to fight Brandon Moreno. I think if Albazi looks really good in that fight, it's clearly his. If Moreno wins that fight, being that he lost to Pantoja, I think there are going to be some questions. Um, and then the other fight that sticks out is uh, Matthews Nicolau is fighting Manel Cape on the very first card in January, January 13th sick fight uh i i think manel has really shown a complete turnaround from his fight with pantoja because remember he debut was his debut against pantoja and he just like decided not to fight the second and third round and thought he won the fight yeah. um and, and he's a completely different guy now i i actually right. think he's maybe the biggest threat to him so like a really good performance against nicolau I mean, that's what got Roy Vall the title shot. So why wouldn't it get him one? So, uh, yeah, like w- whatever one of those four w- comes out looking like roses. Yep. Flyweight's fun. Flyweight is a live with plenty of uh, up and comers in the division. And it's nice to see a guy like Pantoja um, get a little bit of a title run going here um, yep. as well. So as Gumby said, he he was, um, was he the top seed on that season of the Ultimate Fighter? Yeah. yeah. Do you remember, yeah. do you remember who he got in the first round? Uh Moreno. Yeah, Moreno, Moreno was the 16th. Yeah. yeah, Moreno was the yep. 16th seed. So, uh yep. crazy crazy yep. uh tournament in the the grand scheme of things. You know it's not crazy. My transitions today. My transitions are on point. Game time. It's not crazy using game time. Hopefully you made some money off us this past weekend at uh UFC events and you can go treat yourself and maybe some loved ones to uh tickets to anything. Anything. Game time has it all. You don't even uh don't have to plan in advance. You can get tickets from them last minute and they, they got you covered. I've checked it out myself. They got tickets for everything that you're looking for, looking for. Uh, so don't get stressed out trying to buy tickets. You can buy tickets to, for your favorite event without the stress. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater near you with killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee. You can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun. You'll have they got all you need because game time is the place for last minute ticket deals forget planning months in advance game time has deals and tickets right up to the day of the event get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football basketball baseball concerts comedy theater and more once again mma 
We're always thrown in the N more bucket, but they do have MMA. I've checked it out. Game time guarantee means you always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. That means you make money. Snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Game time tickets make the perfect holiday gift. Download game time app, create an account, and use code CFBX for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account and redeem code CFBX for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And our friends at Hall of Fame Bets help you win bigger by betting smarter this NFL season with the Hall of Fame, with Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting analytics platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Research every NFL, NBA, and soccer bet with historical stats and data. Enter any parlay idea in the Hall of Fame Bets revolutionary parlay optimizer tool to get hit rates broken down by leg as well as an expected probability for the entire parlay. Sort all players by hit rate for any bet to learn which players are hot and which picks have value. Stop betting in the dark and join over 30,000 users researching with Hall of Fame Bets to craft more intelligent, data-driven parlays. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com and use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month today. Start researching, start winning with Hall of Fame Bets. All right. This is turning into one of our monster review yeah, we sessions. Gotta, we got to rip through these. Episodes. <laughs> but still... It's the last, it's, it's the, uh, season finale of the UFC. So, um, Shavkat Rachmanov, this was not a fight you could rip through. This was a slog, even though it only lasted two rounds. Um, he ground his way into a submission rear naked choke victory over Stephen Thompson. Four seconds left. Thompson tapped out. People were, some people were criticizing him for that. Um, we're glad he did because we had Rachmanov at minus 549. Yeah, easy, easy fight to call. Uh, you know, I pretty much said this fight only goes the distance if Shopcut is scared of Wonder Boy striking. Clearly wasn't. Looked good doing it. Um, yeah, I, I not much to say here. Uh, no. Shop, Shopcut probably waiting in the wings for a title shot or getting the winner of uh, Gilbert Burns versus JDM. Yep, works for me. Lightweights, Patty Pimblett. Took care of Tony Ferguson, 30-27 across the board, even though Ferguson was winning the fight off his back. If you listen to Joe Joe and DC, and even John Attic got sucked into the Tony Ferguson, the Ferguson hype train. It was <laughs> very annoying. Uh, unanimous decision for Patty Pimblett. Not an impressive performance. We are not impressed with your performance, Patty Pimblett. Pimblett we had him at minus 300. Could not finish Tony Ferguson, which is not, not impressive in the least. I'm really tired of the... Tony Ferguson love. There's just, yeah, I think it's just far outstrips what he's actually accomplished over his career. I know, I'm, I know, I'm talking to a fan of his currently, but um, look at his resume. It does not age well. Just when, like his, just like his actual performances in the cage. It does not age well. They're not, I am they're not, not aging well. Well, and I'll just say, like, you can say what he did in that that what was it a twelve fight run where he went eleven and one. You can say that that was great, and also yeah. at the same time recognize that now he's not even close to even a shell of that thing anymore. <laughs> no. Right. So like the, the in MMA, if you are only paying attention to what they've done recently or only saying they're good or not good, you're going to have a really tough time categorizing a lot of characters. Um, and in this case, you know, like Tony Ferguson was something a lot better than he is now. And what he is now is like needing to hang him up. Um, and I would even say that if I'm the UFC at this stage, and especially for what they're probably paying him at this time, like it's probably just time to let him go. And like, look, you want to go try to win the Bellator title? Go win the Bellator title. You want to enter a season <laughs> of PFL? Go fight for PFL. Like, because there's just not any competitive fights for him anymore. Because I'll say this. Patty Pimblett didn't look like he would beat many top 25 lightweights last night. I would take... You know, the, the name that keeps popping up around Patty Pimblett is Matt Favola. I would easily take Matt Favola to knock that dude's head off. Matt Favola would yes. kill Patty Pimblett. And, like, if that's where Tony Ferguson is at and he's not going to take fights against Daniel Zellhuber, you know, like, what are we doing here? Matt, Matt Favola.com, that was a good um quip in our in our discord last night i can't remember who who put it up there but it was it was funny it talked about um some Crack streaming streams. stuff but anyhow, Crack streams. <laughs> um no i check ferguson's resume he he is very similar to covington's he beat he didn't really beat a lot of elite fighters in their prime he beat the rda's people who were already past it the rda know. fight wasn't past his prime though i think that was still prime rda that was very yeah, okay. close to when he was champ that's a way better win than colby covington's rda win yeah, no, that's true. That's true. But still, he, his resume is not dotted uh, dotted with a... That, that's by far his best win. Edson Barboza, decent win. Good win. 
that Rafael was Dos Santos. Fine, yeah, it was 2016. Okay. Dos Santos, we'll give him that one. But then Kevin Lee, Anthony Pettis, Donald Cerrone. That's that's how he ended his, his yeah. career with wins. So it's not impressive. Yeah. yeah. And the Kevin Lee one too, for the, the record. I mean, losing that fight um, yeah. until he didn't. I, I, I get it that he was a fun weirdo, but you know, as uh, it's, it's past. He's the still fun a fun part. weirdo. <laughs> weirdo parts there. I think it's past the fun part. It's at the, he's been at the scary weirdo part for quite a few years. Now, the so. Diego Sanchez you know what? realm. Yeah. Dana White hopes he retires. Well, Dana, you're in charge. You decide who fights for you. You cut yeah. people every, every day you fire people. So you can decide that he's done. He's lost seven straight guys. Anyhow, um, hoping we can fade Patty Pimblet very, very soon. Hopefully he gets a <laughs> matchup, but who knows? They keep giving him perfect matchups and he keeps winning fights. So we'll see who they match him up with next. This one we do not get right. By the way, it's Josh Emmett. This it wasn't a total, sh totally shocking, um, shocking. Punch was shocking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's true. And, and the twitch, Bryce Mitchell twitching on the canvas was shocking, but um, Bryce Mitchell, he was going to get him down and, and keep him down. Cause Emmett, doesn't have a good takedown defense or Emmett was going to catch him with a punch. And that's what happened. Knocked him out minute 57 into the first round. I don't think this changes what we think about either guy, except we'll see how Mitchell recovers from this uh, going forward. Cause uh, it was a scary knockout. Maybe he thinks that the earth's flat now. Maybe this has straightened out some things, some, some wires in his brain have reconnected, but um, all joking aside, he, he says he's, he's okay, but still that's some, some knockouts fighters can't recover from. So, Hopefully he's going to be okay going for it. That changes a little bit of what I think of Mitchell both because of the KO and also because of the bad fight IQ leading to the KO. Yeah, that's where, true. Like, where, yeah. where was the takedown attempt, dude? Uh, and if yeah, you're he, not gonna... he mentioned that, that himself. Yeah. Yeah. The and so like, if you're not going to try to take somebody down and then also now your chin's questionable, like, yeah, yeah, that uh, it changed how I think of him. Josh Abbott's yeah. still just like a big, massive power puncher at <laughs> featherweight. <laughs> uh such a weird body I, i'm not trying to body shame he's anyone like, but... he's like a, he's like the new age keith jardine <laughs> it's true yes it's true it is true um so that was the main card yep that's all we got through so far but we're having fun right uh i went four and one gummy went three and two on to the prelims a banger um I, I think the the female fight before this um got these guys to to step up their game a bit i mentioned this is gonna be off air we both predict we both uh, analyze this fight perfectly i just ended up coming out on the winning side here alonzo manifield took care of dustin jacoby 29 28 across the board uh i had plus 220 manifield that may be my uh, my biggest hit in a long time at the very least um maybe not of all time um manifield looks sloppy and far less um far less of a striker than than jacoby is but jacoby was getting pieced up like i thought he might and he can take a punch he doesn't get finished but he shows that he's uh, that that he uh he gets wobbled he, he's not very good at hiding when when he uh gets walloped by by big hitters like manifield so manifield was swinging for the fences and he all he had to do was hit, hit a couple in every round and that's what he did and he came through with the win Big props to the judges on this one. I know we brag on the judges all the time. I wanted Jacoby to win this fight. I love Jacoby. I thought Jacoby uh, was the better fighter. But also, he lost based on the criteria. Um, and that's uh, that's really impressive on the judges' part to get that one right. Because uh, Alonzo Menafield won like 45 seconds of this fight. 25 seconds in the second round and 20 seconds yeah. in the third round. And it was, I mean, still the right decision which is uh, really impressive on the judges' part. I think uh, I think both guys did exactly what they're good at, and one of them just looked a little bit better at that moment. Yeah, I'm concerned about Jacoby eating uh, all the punches he's he's been eating at light heavyweight and getting up there in age. So, But he's, um, but he's not getting knocked out. No, I know, which is until <laughs> until he does get knocked out. And then yeah, I mean, like, once he starts getting <laughs> knocked out, it's going to be real bad, probably. Yeah. Yeah, so hopefully, um, I, I like the guy as well. So hopefully, um, he gets things straightened up going forward. Just he he fights with his hands down far too often. Uh, I, I'm I'm no fighter myself, but he fights with his hands down, and that's uh, and Manifield took advantage of it with his wild looping punches and horrible footwork. Um, anyhow, fun fight regardless. It was a good fight all around. It definitely, I I would call it the runner up for fight of the night because the fight that uh, preceded it was definitely. The fight of it that preceded it. Am I am I saying that correctly? Yeah, I'm doing yeah, everything. You're good. Yes. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good English it, it came before. We're, we're, we're doing things backwards here. Um, we go from top to bottom. Yeah, Irene O'Donna 
Carol Hosa, as I stumble through it, uh, women's bantamweight. Who would who would think that women's bantamweight would produce a fight uh, worthy of this, worthy of fighting night? But boy, it, this was a banger. 29 28 across the board. Hosa took care of Aldana in the first round. I was like, oh no, our Aldana pick is in trouble here because she did not look good in the feet. But lucky she is tough, tough as what? Tough as tough as a gumby. Um, <laughs> But both women were wearing it by the end of the fight. But yeah, Aldana turned it on to finish off the fight uh, with the leg kicks, the body kicks. No, Aldana was getting leg kicked. She was body kicking Hosa, and uh, both their faces were a mess. But yeah, exciting fight. The right person won, and we had picked the right person as well. Yeah, not much to say here. Aldana's right yeah. around what we thought she was. The hospital picks are crazy. Have you seen the hospital picks? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yep. God. Hosa's, face, worse. Looks, Hosa's yeah. face looks so bad after you get in some time. Um, yep. But yeah, Aldana's dangerous on the feet, and it's uh, it was good to see somebody oblige her in that kind of fight because she's a lot of fun when you let her fight that way. Yeah, Hosa Hosa's um was growing things on her face by the time she got to the <laughs> hospital, so um some some swelling. Uh, Bantamweights on the men's side, Cody Garbrandt did what we thought he would do. He knocked out Brian Kelleher three forty two into the first round. Kelleher could not um handle being hit by Cody Garbrandt. Doesn't change what I think about other guy except. Keller may be getting cut here because that's three straight and he hasn't been very active and he had neck surgery and he just got knocked out, but it doesn't change what I think about Garbrandt. I'm sure Garbrandt thinks he's going for the title, but um, yeah, it, he's not an elite band of weight any longer. Shale Sonnen suggested he fight Dom Cruz next while at the table with Dom Cruz. Sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, Why not? Yeah, I'd, Makes I'd sense. They're both yeah. at, at, the, at the same point, basically. So Right. I'd run that back. I, I would just say, yeah, he continues to be a power puncher who doesn't seem like he's got anything other than being a power puncher <laughs> at this time. Nope. Nope. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, that was that we hit that one. Oh, so that was the main prelims, early prelims. We didn't have this one, right? Tajira Ulenbekov remembered his name ended in of, and, uh, totally out wrestled Cody Durden ended up submitting with a face crank, even though, uh, Rogan proclaimed it was under the chin, uh, as he always does when clearly it was not under the chin, it was across his face and mouth, but, uh, oh, he's got it locked in. It's under his chin. So I don't know what he's watching, but, um, the result was, was the same. Um, Jordan tapped out 425 into the second round. Maybe Willem Beckoff is better than we, than we gave him credit for. Maybe he shouldn't be allowed to put his toes in the cage. Eight oh, times yes. I forgot take, about that part. Yes. Before we he take the, the Jordan cheater the whole time. Well, and, and like, <laughs> Look, I don't. That's on the ref, not on him. I I don't know that this changes the fight. No, like, no. because like the, he was using that little Iranian trip, which is a takedown. Apparently, Cody Durden has never seen before in his whole life. <laughs> um, he was using that little Iranian trip, and it, it kept getting him down. So, like, would it have happened again? Probably, but like, you can't let a guy who's slipping off the back mount seven different times put his toes into the cage. And then you just slap him away and tell him not to do it. Like if you're going to warn him 50 times. times. Yeah. At one point in time, which, which one is the one where you take the position? Cause to me, yeah. he does it once you warn him and slap his toes out of the cage. He does it again. You take his position away and guess what? He's not doing it anymore. Cause he's not in that position. And if you didn't let him do it a second time, or if he didn't do it a second time, he probably would have slid off. It looked like his body was sliding off. That's why you put your toes in the cage in that situation. Um, and again, I don't think it changes who won that fight. Like I, I think Ulanbakov would have probably been up two rounds anyway, and you know would have been well on his way to winning that fight. But like, man, what are these refs doing, dude? Like, just a little bit of uniformity, like in terms of how many warnings you get before you lose yep. a position and stuff. Yep. Yeah, it was very frustrating. Uh, but as I said in the Discord, MMA is always going to MMA. Uh, featherweights, Andre Feely. I, you, you picked Feely to win. I don't know if you predicted him to take <laughs> no, care of Lucas Almeida on the feet, but boy, he took care of Lucas Almeida on the feet. I made him not look good. Uh, if he sticks around, he's going to have to be a, probably a fade going forward. He got TKO punches 332 into the first round. Gumby hit Feely on this one. Well, and, and he's definitely a fade moving forward because his biggest problem is that he gives up too many takedowns. Feely didn't even try to take him down and still beat him. Uh, what does that say? Uh, yeah. it, it, it seems like Lucas Almeida probably not long for this organization um although you know andre feely just has a way of being a spoiler and stick in the mud in people's plans uh yep i think he's a lot better than people give him credit for 98 percent of the time you know i mentioned we broke down the fight on wednesday that joe anderson breed two loss aged exceptionally well mm -hmm. yep 
it sure sure did sorry i you, you cut out and i see you staring at me blankly and not I talking got, so i, I got know. nothing this I got is my time more. to talk <laughs> this is my time to talk let's go to the opener we hit this one there was a nice starting to the night and actually it Easy. didn't it, it didn't fall off the cliff like it often does when we have a good start tonight shamila gaziev picked apart the four and oh in the ufc martin budai who they were playing up how great he was and how great his body looked and uh, i guess it was dc <laughs> saying that so um his he got picked apart good. <laughs> he got picked apart. TKO punches 56 seconds in the second round. I don't know if this we had Gaziov as a underdog, which was nice, plus 126. Um, yeah, I don't know if this says anything about Gaziov or not, but uh, uh, Ilir Latifi came through for us. So, <laughs> Barini and Ilir. <laughs> um, yeah, no, there's I a, there's a good title right there. Barini and Ilir. Uh, Barini and yeah, Ilir. Yeah, no, I uh. I don't know that it says all that much about him either. He's going to hit people who uh, don't know how to come forward and are ready to be hit. Good for him. Uh, he's got good power, which I said on the show. Uh, I don't I don't know that there's much more to that. I will say his KO prop being plus 250 is one of the most insane lines. in. in I know hindsight's 20, 20 uh, yeah. although we had it in foresight. Um, but, man, that number is just nuts. Like, he was going to win that fight by knockout, obviously. <laughs> Yes, I I buried the lead. Excuse me. Um, Gumby had that at, as his prop of the week, plus two fifty. So boom, there you go. Uh, overall, we both went eight and four, but I won a bit more than Gumby did last night. Uh, as for the fancy plays, Gumby had Aldana as his lock. It hit. He had Durden as his dog. Did not hit. He had Gazi as his prop. It hit. Oh, we didn't uh, talk about Lipsky. Oh, I missed that fight. I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah. Uh, Lipsky Let's talk about Ariane Lipsky looking like a beast. <laughs> yes. Uh, that was the opener of the early prelims. Ariane Lipsky took apart Casey O'Neill. Submission armbar 118 into the second round. Um, this was both a case of Lips Lipsky um, looking fantastic and definitely someone to keep an eye on in the division and O'Neill not living up to, to the hype that she, she had. Um, and she she's another one with a resume that does not hold up uh, under under extensive uh, scrutiny. Uh, so yeah, I, I think we over over uh, rated her, or at least at least I did. Um, I have to adjust that going forward. But yeah, Lipsky don't want to take anything away from Lip, Lipsky's performance because it was a complete performance. Piece drop in the feet and then finish her on the ground. Yeah, and she's starting to look like she did in KSW. Yeah, which is dangerous. Yep. I mean, she was the KSW champ for a minute up there, and before she came over to the UFC. And, uh, man, she's starting to look like the same fighter. And that's so dangerous. Because, like, if she can beat up Casey O'Neill like that, there's a lot of ranked flyweights she could beat. You know, like a yep. lot of them. Like, All right, Booker. You... Booker, I, I mean, go ahead. So, uh, Lauren Murphy is fighting Karina, De... or Karina Silva in, I think, the first card of the year, January 13th. Give her the winner of that. Like, yep, would you would you take her to beat? lauren murphy right now yes i think definitely. i would yeah and like yep. what what's lauren murphy like number eight or nine like yep. that's a that's an incredible ceiling for somebody who we kind of written off after her first couple of fights yeah just took her a little bit to uh to get into the groove in in the ufc but yeah as gumby says she looked she's living up to to her rep that she came into the promotion with so um all right my fancy picks didn't come through i had uh randy brown that fight did not happen. Uh, it fell off. We had a couple of fights. We lost a couple of fights. Um, the much maligned Ian Machado, Gary, Ian Gary Machado, whoever you want to call him, his fight fell off. He's already got another one booked uh, against Jeff Neal. So th I think that makes you look even worse <laughs> when you pull out a fight and they immediately, okay, we'll, we'll book you again immediately uh, and, and against a, uh, a different opponent. But nonetheless, uh, he was legitimately sick. And then we uh, lost Randy Brown and Muslim Salikov because Brown got sick as well. So uh, Brown was my lock. Obviously, it didn't fight. He didn't lose, at the very least. And then I had Almeida as my dog that didn't hit. Pimblet inside the distance should have hit, uh, but it did not. And then Gumby whiffed him. I say Gumby because it's his his picks. He whiffed them both of his uh, Hungry Man Jong picks. So um, on the season, 59% hit rate for me, which is... I have to be at least minimum 60. So uh, I'm disappointed in myself. Gumby had 58%, which is good for you, Gumby. But he only lost 3% of his money and I lost 6% return on investment. So more than double me there. Lock, you were up 7.5% return on investment on your locks on the year. I was down 6%. You were down 25% on your dogs. I was down 29%. 
And then for your props, you were down two and a half percent. I was down six percent. So you beat me in all of them, Gumby, but you did good big, with your locks. Big, big, big lock here. Big lock here. Yeah. There you go. Um, back to the real world. The bonus winners last night, Arena Donna, Carol Hosa were fight of the night, um, which was a good choice. And then Emmett, Lipsky, and Gaziov got performance of the night. So UFC was so generous. They gave away an extra 50K. Um, so that's it. No more UFC events until January the 13th. So I guess we have a month off, Gumby. We can just kind of chill. No, we'll you know, in everyone's you know we, ears in a month. We'll you talk know to we you got stuff early planned. January. <laughs> we do have stuff planned. Somehow we're still going to do four shows a week, even though there's no UFC for a month. There's some pretty sick fight cards, though. Uh, tomorrow we'll be talking about A1 Fight, which is uh, Uriah Faber's promotion. Gumby's not, favorite man, Uriah Faber. Not, 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 the, not the best card, I will say, but... There are some really sick cards that we will be breaking down in both December and January. There's a really good LFA card in early January. There's an awesome Octagon card to end the year. And uh, maybe my favorite, and I think we might even dedicate two shows to it, is uh, there is an, an out-of-this-world rising show uh, on New Year's Eve filled with people who you care about, including one who I think I've been hyped on for a really long time. Uh, who is about to be signed to the UFC as long as he wins on New Year's Eve. Um, or at least he's taking pictures with Dana White in UFC gear, uh, which there is a real weird thing to do if you're not about yeah, to sign there. And he's a sumo wrestler. Uh, so yeah. many of you who will know who I'm talking about, but uh, those of you who don't, tune in to our December episodes where we'll talk yeah. about uh, sumo wrestlers. We're not going anywhere. We'll also recap the year that was in the UFC and, and how our predictions of champions at the end of the year uh, played out. And then we'll we'll predict 2024 for you. So, And if there's anything else you'd like us to cover going forward, but we'll, we'll probably have, have some wiggle room uh, if you want topics or, or anything Fighter. else um, or anything. Hit us up in the Discord. Uh, it would be sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. Uh, Twitter, SGPN MMA. Uh, he's at Gumby Vreeland. I'm a Jeff Fox writer there and in on Instagram. What else we have? I got my money MMA sub stack. Subscribe there. Enter my pick'em contest. I will be running once again once the UFC is back up and running. But uh, in the meantime, I'll be doing plenty of writing and uh, different things on there. Gumby's got Top Turtle MMA podcast. There's no holidays for that. It's always going. Uh, do you know who's on it next week, or are we going to leave it a surprise at this point? Yeah, I'm going to talk to a couple of the guys who are on the Uriah Faber A1 fight card that's coming up this weekend. I'm talking to Jacob Rosales, who is on the Contender Series a couple of times, and Jose Avalos, who will also be fighting on that card. There you go. Make sure you listen to that and all everything else in the sports gambling sphere is at sportsgamblingpodcast.com. And don't forget about our Discord. Help us stomp out corporate gambling. It would be sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Patreon. All right, um, we'll be back tomorrow with some your favorite A one, um, A one breakdowns. Uh, it'll be me, the Queen of Islands, Jeff Fox. Uh, who will be with me? Baddies, of course. Baddies, gonna be real, and we'll be uh, riding shotgun. And we'll talk to you then. Bye bye.